Hey friend, John McLennan here, and in this video you're gonna learn how to play Use Me as recorded by Bill Withers on guitar. Now I'm gonna break down the main chord progression to this song, you're also gonna learn a funky strumming pattern to go along with it, and finally I'm also gonna show you the keyboard part that's really fun to play on guitar as well. So when you're done with this video, you're gonna have some great parts that you can go and jam along with that classic Bill Withers recording. Before we dive in though, I wanna hook you up with something for spending some time with me here on my channel today. At the first link down below, I've got a free book all about soloing. And this is a book I wrote that has over a hundred licks and exercises in it. And it comes with audio downloads of all the examples as well. And it's all completely for free. I just wanna give it to you as a gift for spending some time with me today. And you can grab your copy at johnmclennan.com slash free book, or use the first link down below. All right, well with that said, let's break this song down. All right, so we're gonna start off with the keyboard part, and that sounds like this. I'll just play that part by itself, and I like to add a little bit of distortion just to get a, uh, a cool tone to it. Here's what it sounds like. All right, so this is a riff that's gonna be based off our chords, which we're gonna talk about. The chords are E minor seven to A seven as our main chord progression for the whole song. But we're gonna start with this riff on the fifth fret, and we're gonna do a hammer from five to seven on the fifth string. Then go to the fifth fret on the fourth string. Then come back to seven on the fifth string. So it's then we're gonna go to the fifth fret on the fifth string and do a little roll where we grab five on the fifth string and then five on the fourth string. So just roll my finger to get those notes. So Then you come back to seven on the fifth string. Then you go. So that's five on the fourth string. Then go to the fifth string and play seven, five, four, and then finish with seven. So. And our rhythm is based in 16th notes. We're thinking one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Three, four, then we do it again. And we have three little notes that we add the second time around. So the first time when we play four to seven, two and three and four, and we just rest for the remainder of that measure. So the first riff. One and two E and a three E and a four E and a then come in again right on the downbeat. Now the second time, play it exactly the same. But we're gonna go and do this little walk up. I play it on the low E, starting on the seventh fret. We go seven, eight, nine. And that's just like one E and a two E and a three E and a comes in right on the E of three. Three E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a. So that's the second part there with the riff. Now, our chord progression that goes with this is just two chords. So I'm gonna go to a clean tone for this and I'll just jam on those two chord shapes. Here's what it sounds like. One, two, three, four. So they're the same kind of grip, but in different places on the guitar. So the first one is an E minor seven, and here we're gonna play the seventh fret of the fifth string, then skip the fourth string, go to the third string and play the seventh fret, and then the second string and play the eighth fret. Now the trick is, is you wanna be able to play this chord, but mute the other strings. So you have to be able to strum it. 
Now Bill actually uses these fingers. He uses one, two, three, which you can copy that. There's a live video of him playing. You can check out on the internet and he's, he's just doing these two shapes, but he fingers it like that. Now I, I go like this, um, but sometimes I'll go like that. I, I actually interchange them, but most of the time this just feels more comfortable for me. So whatever's comfortable for you is cool. And then we're gonna switch to keeping that shape the same, but notice that I'm now starting on the low E fifth string. So I've got five, five, and then six. So that's five on the low E, five on the fourth string, and then six on the third string. So one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a switch. Two, there's a bar on each chord. One, two, three, four, change. Two, three, four. Now if I add a little bit more strumming with that, I might play something like this. So what I played was a 16th note based rhythm, and I'm starting out with two 16ths, one E and then an eighth note, and so one E and a two E and a one E and a, okay? So that's down, up, down for that first beat. One E and a, and then two E and a. Then on beat two, I'm gonna play two E and a. That's down, up on a scratch strum, and then down, up, fretting the chord, so. So beats one and two go one E and a, two E and a, and then three E and a. This is alternating a scratch strum to playing the chord. And then on beat four, I'm just gonna play four on the downbeat, and then the and of four, I'm gonna play actually open strings as I change to the next chord. And that's gonna be the same in the next measure when you go back from A7 to E minor, you're gonna go so all together it's one E and a two E and a three E and a four and one E and a two E and a three E and a four and And then together if I throw the lead in on top of that, that would sound like this. Three, four. Congrats on making it through this classic Bill Withers Use Me guitar lesson. Be sure to take each part slow, work it out, and then try and put it together and jam along with the recording. This recording has such an incredible feel to it, and it's great practice. Instead of using a backing track, just go and play along with the recording. And before you go, make sure to download my free soloing guidebook at the first link down below. And this is gonna give you over 100 licks and exercises that you can practice that come with downloadable audio examples and just a ton of great information for you about kickstarting your lead playing. And there's no scales, there's no boring exercises. Everything is real world lines and phrases that you can practice over a chord progression like Use Me. You could play that chord progression into your looper and just jam away with a lot of these lines and really start opening up the fretboard and just having a ton of fun. So check that out at johnmcclennan.com slash free book. You can get your copy there or use the first link down below. Before you go, leave a comment and let me know your number one song that you would like to see me teach here next on the channel. Thanks for your support with the videos and we'll see you in another one real soon.